gorgeous, baby. You're gorgeous. This is the Josh Podcast Podcast Show. The anti-podcast podcast on God and man. The show that everybody's talking about. The show that will become a necessary part of your weekly mental diet. The show that picks up where joshrolf.com leaves off. The show title that uses the word podcast four times. <laughs> Introducing your host, Josh Rolf. As promised, this is the second episode on a Tuesday night in a row. Even I can't believe it. I said I was going to do it, and I can't believe it. And you know what? It's been a really good thing for me. I'm glad I'm doing this. I'm glad I'm doing the once a week thing because it's just right. It's it's right. It's meant to be. And proof of that is that this is episode 40. And 40, as you all know, is a very special number. I spent a lot of time talking about episode 40. If I had had a weekly podcast leading up to my 40th birthday last November, we could have talked a little bit more about it. But because I only did like two or three episodes leading up to my days to 40 episodes, um, those, those could have been so much better if only I had been committed. But that's the beauty of being 40 years old. Now that I am 40, I now have like this new uh, perspective. It's this, I wouldn't call it wisdom. I wouldn't say I'm wiser than I was four months ago, five months ago. But there is, there is some, there is some good stuff going on in my life right now. It's just, it's, it's one of those things you can't quite put a finger on it, but it's like getting to know yourself better, which is part of, you know, living. We're all, we think we've got ourselves figured out and then we're hit with new experiences and then things change and there's good, there's good stuff around the corner. This episode is episode 40, which I don't know, you know, why, since it is so special, a number why I chose the subject to be how to sit as the subject of this episode. But there must be some deep significance in that because I'm, I'm sitting right now and you might be too, unless you're working out, you might be on the treadmill, but that's a form of uh, stand sitting. I mean, if you're driving, forget I said that stand sitting, I, that doesn't make sense. If you're driving, if you're sitting on the couch, if you're, I mean, really, even if you are working out, you are going to be sitting soon. Okay. You might feel really good. Like, yeah, Josh, I'm working out right now. I'm running. I'm doing this great thing, but you're going to be sitting soon. Just like I am. We spend so much of life sitting and frankly, we don't give it nearly as much thought as it deserves. There's an art to sitting and that's what I'm going to talk about soon. But before I do, I want to preview what the, what coming episodes are going to consist of. And I'm going to do that very briefly because, and let's, let's back up again. I don't know if you watched The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. I am a huge Stephen Colbert fan. I think the guy is hilarious. I love The Colbert Report on Comedy Central. He is genius, performs genius comedy. Very smart man, and he's got just excellent timing and delivery and great voice and look, and he's just got it. Every single YouTube promo clip that he had leading up to the release of his show, the late show with Stephen Colbert on CBS. Each of those clips was hilarious and his opening night was pretty darn good. And a few nights later, ratings started to slip predictably. Uh, people were checking it out. Now he's eight months in and there was a big story the other day 
that ran uh, about how he's getting, I think it was yesterday, that the show is already getting a reboot because it's somehow not working. Here's Stephen Colbert, and he apparently he's been like micromanaging the show, and they're like, you know, back off. Don't don't worry about whether your interns have had coffee or not. You need to be focused on the comedy, on your script, etc. I say that because here's a guy who's got a huge staff, huge budget in the millions, makes a ton of money. And I have a show here. I'm on the opposite side. If you were to look, if you were to compare comedy shows on a spectrum like the ideological spectrum where you have on the far left and far right, well, there's a spectrum of podcasts and entertainment and shows. And if you put them all podcast, TV, everything all in the same boat, His show is on one extreme and mine is on the other. Mine wouldn't be totally on the end. The one on the very end is the guy who is recording from his uh, 10 year old MP3 player. And, uh, and it's like really fuzzy and you can't really hear him too well. And he's got a little stutter or something. Um, Mine's maybe a little closer to Colbert's, but, but still, different um, solar systems still. I mean, we're, we're pretty far away from each other, but the same concept applies. Sometimes even shows on the other side of the spectrum of shows need a reboot. Not that this podcast has been bad. It's just not good. At least not as good as I want it to be. So last week's decision to go weekly is the best thing that could happen to the show because it's going to get better starting now. And here's what I'll do or try to do. The episode like this one will have a title and already I'm seven minutes in and I'm sorry, but I won't go this long without getting to the subject. I mean, I have, I guess I've teased it. I've teased how to sit, but In the future, if the show is called How to Sit, I would have already been well into my monologue on How to Sit. After the title segment, there will be two more segments, at least. Now, here's what I was thinking. The show is the anti-podcast because it is the anti-podcast. I am not a one-genre show. This show is thoughts on God and man. And so I'm going to have two segments at the end of the show. One segment will be on a God topic. The other will be on a man topic. And for those of you thinking, what does that mean? The God topic will deal with a spiritual or inspirational. uh, I don't want to say motivational because that might lead more into the man category. But I'm going to talk about something that is that kind of inspires or uh, lifts and um, and what I'm going to talk about today doesn't have anything to do with scripture or anything. It's a it's a it's a quote I just heard today by a comedian. So that'll be my God topic. So I'm going to be very um, flexible in which which. uh, segment that falls under the God or the man, the man topic will be everything else. Anything that is not spiritual or inspirational will fall into the man topic. It'll just be stuff I'm interested in. It'll be one thing, kind of a, a one cool thing. Like I've heard on a podcast called script notes about script screenwriting by John August And uh, they have one cool thing that he and his partner um, uh, lead off with. So that will be the show. And then it will end with that. So before I say anything else, here we go. How to sit. This is a post you can find at my blog, rol.ph slash one I. There's a picture there. 
of a certain Seinfeld episode where George Costanza is fumbling along trying to find something in his massively huge, thick wallet. And a lot of times people ask me, oh, have you seen that? Oh, that Seinfeld. Oh, have you seen that episode, Josh? No. Most likely I have not seen it. But the concept looks very funny of him looking. It's season nine, episode 12. I carry a slim wallet around. The slim wallet has improved my quality of life ever since it was given to me about now it would be nine years ago or so. I love my slim wallet because the slim factor makes it barely noticeable in my back pocket when I sit for long periods of time and also for short periods of time. Not only is the slim wallet good for carrying the essential cards and cash, it's also a good door opener when I'm trying not to touch germ-infested door handles in public places, as I talk about frequently on this podcast. It doesn't work well trying to open the doorknob variety, the round ones. I use the shoe for that. And I'll demonstrate that sometime when the Josh channel channel goes live. So do you do this or is it just me? Since I can't easily feel my wallet anymore after going with the slim wallet, I have developed a habit of giving my rear end a subtle pat to see if my wallet is still there. I try to be discreet about it and sometimes it's not there. So I get a little panic until I, until I realize that it's conveniently placed in my shirt pocket. So then I find myself checking my rear end and my shirt pocket fairly often with a couple of little taps. So I'll tap my butt, I'll tap my chest and it's just a thing I do. So a future biographer might title this chapter of my biography, his wallets. And this is where I begin. For the 10 or 15 years prior to discovering the slim wallet, I carried the classic billfold wallet in my back pocket. The problem was that back pant pockets would quickly wear out. Long drives became uncomfortable and the see-through plastic card holding insides don't know what their name is, would fall apart or become so seared, scarred, and sticky with black ink impressions of their former contents that they would become virtually unusable. Worst of all, I even appeared to lean a little to the left while sitting, which was all always embarrassing to no one but me. In the early days of wallet carrying, I didn't have enough cards, pictures, etc. to fill the plastic inserts. I didn't have a bank account, which meant that the money I earned entered my wallet, and that was cash, coins, and all. Through my teenage years, my wallet began to be a place I kept notes, cards, and keepsakes. It became the home of a dollar bill signed by a musician's that toured through the more indie theaters in Philadelphia. I kept a strand of Morrissey's shirt in my wallet for a long time. The inch long string of shirt is now ashes below a smoldering heap of trash somewhere in landfill, Pennsylvania. I'm sure I spent the dollar bill sometime later when I began to value food more than autographs. The vending machine's famous Amos chocolate chip cookies were totally worth it. My wallet also became a place that I kept more spiritual things to remember. The next subject heading is cocaine. In my early teens in the back seat of a police car, I admired my friend who boldly showed the cop through the glass partition, his wallet-sized Latter-day Saint for the Strength of Youth pamphlet and said, This is what I live by, 
as we try to convince the cops that we were innocent of planting bags of cocaine along a trail in a nearby park. It all began when we decided to call the police after noticing suspicious looking bags on a trail. We weren't idiots. We were probably hoping for careers in the FBI, but apparently the police thought we were better candidates for the police academy films. Or they were better candidates for those films, meaning those officers. You boys better come with us, you hear? As they picked us up from my home. Five or six cop cars waited for us at the trailhead. Later, the older cop was getting frustrated. After splitting me and my friend up from each other, they saw inconsistencies with our story. The older cop said, Son, you lie to us and you will have to ride behind a mule picking up its He thought he was terrorizing me. That line worked well in 1642. It must have been a slow day because a couple hours of amateurish interrogation later, trying to break us, their case fell apart when they saw that a small patch of dry skin on my earlobe was in fact dry skin and not remnants of cocaine. I know what you're thinking. That's an unusual place for dry skin, Josh. And I agree, but it was a blessing. Today, I could be in rural Arkansas riding behind a mule. After the cop incident, I began to carry that church pamphlet around in my wallet. Moving on. How I almost lost my slim wallet. The problem with slim wallets is they are so expensive. I used to buy a wallet for 10 bucks. My Ralph Lauren slim wallet retails for $80, but it still looks great. Even after floating down Independence Avenue in Washington, D.C., Shortly after receiving my new wallet, when I lived there, I got a call from the National Chicken Council saying one of their employees had found my slim wallet floating along the curb toward a sewer vent on Independence Avenue. Retracing my steps, I had left my wallet on my lap as I paid a cab driver before exiting at the curb for my office during a significant rainstorm. Point is, my slim wallet has been through a lot And it still looks great. I've titled this post and now episode, How to Sit. Here's my advice. Don't sit with the wallet in your pants pocket. Don't sit with the wallet on your lap. Slim wallets will help with the leaning factor while sitting in a convention workshop. And that's from a picture taken above. Uh... So you have to look at that image on the post and you'll see a man who's kind of sitting with like one cheek to the right of his chair and in between that and the chair to his right. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done that, but I, I suspect that he did that because of the massive wallet in his right cheek pocket. Here's more advice. Carry something uplifting in your wallet. Next, don't hurry out of a cab on a busy street when it's raining hard and you have a lot of stuff in your hands. Don't call the cops, especially if you have dry skin on your earlobe. And sit up straight, don't slouch. That right there is my, my, uh, my attempt at teaching you how to sit. Probably not that helpful, a little bit of a dud, but hey, This is the beginning of episode 40. Things are going to get so much better. Now, listen, the man topic today is all about a new product that I just discovered yesterday. It's called the C note S E E no space N O T E. This is the As it says on their website, getcnote.com. It is the always on digital sticky note. And it is a basically a, a three and a half inch square device made of e paper, which is the same screen display that you would recognize on a Kindle e reader. 
Uh, you can see it in light. Uh, bright lights can shine on it, and you can still see the the display perfectly. And it also has a touch screen, so you can tap it. But basically, what it is is a sticky note that can be placed anywhere on your wall at the door it can be placed there's a magnet so you can put it on your refrigerator and it looks awesome it's 99 dollars if you order now it won't be available for another year and in the hardware world that could mean a year and a half to two years but hopefully these guys can do it right get it out the door they put together a beautiful website and a great uh, video. So if you go to get C Note, you can see the future of displays. And I love this because I'm going to be talking about it on a future episode. My failed business idea. I prototyped an e paper display that didn't go p anywhere past the prototype stage. And I have. Uh, it's called a business love story and that will be a future podcast. So that is my man topic on the God topic. I hinted at this that on the podcast WTF with Mark Marin comedian, he interviewed uh, Gary Shamling back in 2011 the episode is quite lengthy, but quite worth it as well, especially if you are a Gary Shandling, who is now deceased, uh, if you are a fan. I am a huge Gary Shandling fan and have been since I was like 12 years old, watching his show on uh, TV when I got home from school, uh, and he went on to do some really inventive, great things. And I find some common ground with Gary, with Gary Shanley because he was anti-establishment. He even called himself this. He said all of his shows are a bit anti-establishment. Uh, the Larry Sanders show, the It's Gary Shanling show, they were all just sort of um, hyper self-aware shows that uh, pushed the envelope really on what could be done on TV. And there were some producers, so they talk on the podcast about uh, making decisions uh, that are based on fear. And so this, this falls under the God category because uh, what can lift us out of fear? And Gary Shandling, a practicing Buddhist, uh, had what I thought was a beautiful way of seeing the world. So he said... Uh, when an exec would tell him, hey, you need to do a show with uh, where you're just talking to a dog the whole time. And he said, I did it, but it felt so formulaic to me. And so Mark Marin says, well, what do you think these executives are basing their decisions on? And they both agree that they're making these decisions based on fear. And Gary says, we're all making, and I type this out just just now um, for the show so it's, and I may have missed a few words it's not exact but it says we're all making decisions Gary says we're all making decisions based on fear we have to be very 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 and he may have had a couple more varies in there <clears throat> very careful because the other thing we're addicted to in America is the idea of security and trying to make everything perfect and solid and secure when in fact, and here's the beautiful part, when in fact life itself is impermanent, not solid, but pure energy as proven by quantum mechanics. And the idea of trying to make it secure as in to put walls around it is all fear. It's all based on fear. This incredible underlying sense of panic, Gary continues, about protecting what we have is what a human being on his own cannot do. I love that. I love that. And I think that fits with this show. This show is the anti-establishment show. And there are, have been times where I've gone weeks without recording an episode. And you know what? 
to be very honest, it is based on fear. I'm, I'm kind of scared putting myself out there like this. Anyone can listen to this podcast in the world. I have people listening to it that I don't know. That's a little scary. And especially when it's crickets after I put this out, I don't hear anything. I know people are listening because I see the stats, but um, no more fear. So life is impermanent. It's not solid. It is pure energy. And so all I can do is put my energy out there Another way of putting that in a godlike way is our spirits, our souls, our essence uh, that is more in the cosmos, putting ourselves out there and then hoping, you know, that maybe it touches someone in some way, makes you laugh, makes you cry, makes you feel good, changes your life, changes mine. So I have this innate desire to do that to do this even and uh, that's my god thought for the day so uh, I will go back to the iTunes uh, rating request Uh, if you could be so kind I have had a couple of five star reviews in the last uh, week I appreciate that because no one had done that before so thank you for those that did that Anyone else out there who has not done it, it's a little complicated to do from the phone, so I recommend doing it from the web. Just do a search on Josh Podcast Podcast Show. You have to be searching it in the iTunes store. You can't do it while you're listening to it. And uh, do that, and I would love it, and I will be back next week. See you then. Thank you for listening to the Josh Podcast Podcast Show, the anti-podcast podcast on God and man. For more information, visit joshpodcast.com. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh Rolf. That's Rolf, R-O-L-P as in podcast, H. Now go and have the best day and night ever. And have fun. See you.